yes so we are good to go ma'am uh, we are on live on youtube now ha huh. yes so a very good evening and a warm welcome to all the delegates for today's live session for core connect uh before starting mm -hmm. let us take blessings from almighty and then we will start today's uh, webinar Once again, welcome for today's uh, fifth series of CoConnect webinar. So, after a successful fourth series, today uh, we are on fifth series of CoConnect, and today's topic will be contraception, which, when, and why. Before starting today's webinar, let me take this opportunity to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Tandu Wardka, ma'am. Uh, she is uh, HOD of IVF and Endoscopy Center from Pune. She is advisor and consultant at uh, DY Patil IVF and Endoscopy Center. She is also founder and medical director of Solo Clinic IVF. She has reported India's first stem cell baby and world's first at the age of 45 on 16th April 2018. Ma'am is a president at POG S 2021-22. She is chairperson and founder, honorary secretary of ISAR. Also, she has authored more than eight books and she has reported more than 29 publications. She has 60 plus keynotes and 37 orations. So, without making any delay, uh, I would like to hand over today's session to Dr. Tanduwadka, ma'am. Ma'am, over to you. Give me the sharing rights also. Sure, ma'am. You can share the screen. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. So, we are back with our fifth series of this Core Connect, which happens on second Monday of every month. Today, we will be talking on contraception. There is so much advances in a contraception. So which contraception, when to use, which has more failure rate, success rate, what are the newer contraceptive, we'll be discussing everything. Because we have a global viewership, I thought, let me put in all the languages. And Corona, thank you so much. Your team worked fantastically. Give my regards to each and every one of you. India was the first country in the world to have launched a national program for family planning in 1952. This is very important to know and to be proud of. Over the decades, the program has undergone transformation in terms of policy and actual program implementation and currently being repositioned to not only achieve population stabilization goals, but also promote reproductive health and reduce the maternal, infant and child mortality and morbidity. So what are the key approaches in this? First is improve the quality of services to provide the contraceptive choice. Cafeteria approaches, the basket of choices, everyone should know about it and every woman has a right to decide freely and responsibly the number and spacing of their children with the information and means to do so. So these are the key approaches one should have when we talk about. If you see the Lancet, the contraceptive methods globally and in India, the male sterilization in India, only 1.3%. The intrauterine devices, again, very low, 3%. Injectables, 1%. Implants, 0.5%. What is maximum is 13.9% is the condom and 7.7% .7 is the pill, which is used widely. While abroad or globally, near 20% is the intrauterine devices. So this is what the Lancet has published. 
Now, what are the various factors that influence the population growth? Unmet need of family planning, age at marriage and the first childbirth, and the spacing between the births. These are the real factors which influence the population growth. And high quality counseling at the first visit, continued counseling during the pregnancy and the postpartum definitely has the potential to reduce this unmet need of a contraception. Very important. We need to keep on counseling the patient. Contraception is not very easily acceptable. They need a repeated hammering. And what are the various ways you can uh, counsel? Uh, either you have a rapo building, you explore, you uh, give them a time to take the decision, and then you have to reach to the implementation stage. So I'm not going to talk about this more, but what is very important, the essential examination before providing any method. You just can't take, uh, say, you go with this method or that method. You, When you want to put the device, very important that you do the pelvic or genital examination, PSPV. You need to rule out a PID, any pelvic inflammatory diseases. Or when you are giving the oral contraceptive pills, it's very important. Apart from the pelvic examination, the blood pressure, the liver function test, any other associated liver diseases, blood pressure, all this is important. Now, when you talk about the methods of family planning, there may be a temporary method or maybe a permanent method. Today, permanent method I know will be a male sterilization or female sterilization, while temporary method is the main contraceptive or interceptives we will be talking about. So, need for a contraception, if you see, 21% of all the pregnancies are unplanned pregnancy. And if unmet need for the contraception was met, we can avoid 52 million unwanted pregnancy. This is a very high figure to accept, but that is a truth. The Lancet is published in 2017. And if you really want to control this 52 million unwanted pregnancy, automatically you will control between 25 to 50% of maternal deaths. And that's a huge figure for all of us. Now, when we know that these are the needs for a contraception, what are the various contraception we can talk? Most important, divide into two groups non-hormonal and the hormonal contraception. What are the non-hormonal? Natural family planning method, barrier method, intrauterine devices, or a female sterilization. And the hormonal contraception, I'm obviously written female because I'm talking about the female today. Hormonal contraception, oral contraceptive pills, injectables, implants, the vaginal ring, or the transdermal patches. Now, natural family planning methods, there are many natural family. Rhythm method or a calendar method, the BBT, cervical mucus, symptothermal method, which is a combination of the BBT and uh, the day of a cycle, or two-day method, ovulation detection, so many tests. I'm going to go in a little rapidly about all, just to tell you. What about the natural method? Most important, understand, we can have it only those women who have a regular cycle when there is a cooperation of both the partners and you need a proper counseling about the emergency in case if they failed. So they should be aware that they might have to use an emergency contraceptive. Now, calendar method or a rhythm method, it has a very high failure rate and it reduces the number of days of intercourse for a couple. Cervical mucus, we all know that uh, before pre-ovulatory, uh, it will be a scanty thick and with the estrogen effect, it becomes a profuse watery mucus. So, lady has to abstain at the first sign of a change in a cervical mucus. It's not suitable method for those who have an abnormal vaginal discharge for an obvious reason. BBT, yes, 
they can start thinking about an intercourse is allowed only three days after the uh, rise because we uh, expect that 36 hours after that the egg will ovulate and we consider another 36 hours for the life of a oocyte. So three days after the peak they should be. And the symptothermal is where you combine the billing method that is the cervical mucus with the BBT. But it has its own failure rates. Standard A method, you get these beads. Those ladies who obviously have a regular cycle, the first bead is considered when the first day of a mens is the red color. And then the six brown beads are the non-fertile days. Probably the lady will be having a bleeding during this phase. Then the fertile days are the 12 fertile days with the white bead. And then the last three, 13 are the brown which is the infertile bits so they can have a uh, they cannot have the relation when they are on a white bits and obviously very high failure rate with them ovulation detection monitors available even with the urinary lh kits are available and it can predict around 60 percent of the time the ovulation while coitus interrupters can be used during the most fertile method, but the failure rate is very high. And if you use it very correctly, the coitus interrupters, still it is nine. So it's very high per 100 pregnancy. Now, lactational amenorrhea method, breastfeeding, we all know what will happen is hyperprolactinemic stage. So there is an inhibition to the LH and naturally the lady will have either amenorrhea or anovulation. What are the disadvantages of these natural family planning methods? Require a tremendous commitment and motivation. Needs cooperation of both the partners. Does not protect you from sexually transmitted diseases. And it's obviously less effective. Now, barrier methods. Which are the various barrier methods? Of course, the male condom, female condom, diaphragm, cervical cap, and the chemical barriers. Condoms, yes, the pregnancy rate with the latex 5.4%, while well, 9% with polyurethane. Advantages, more resistant to heat and oxidation. Most important advantage, I will say, uh, about the use of a condom is sexually transmitted diseases can be uh, avoided. Now, about the condom, advantages, apart from a sexually transmitted lower risk of PID, more cost effective, easy to get and use and no systemic side effects to it. While for the disadvantages, you need a commitment, especially of the male partner. Breakage and slippage may happen in 2% of the cases. Efficacy decreases with the oil-based lubricants. There may be latex at allergies or less sensation and a pleasure one may complain of. Typical first year failure rate is 15. With spermicide, it can come down to one. Newer condoms, of course, there are various newer condoms can come. It's a huge market. But the invisible condom, that is a molecular condom, where you get the polymer gel, which is of sodium laurel sulfate, and it entraps the pathogens also. That's another it remains liquid at room temperature and gel on a tissue contact. So probably this gel will not allow the seepage of the seminal fluid. The female condoms are available. Only female controlled method protecting from HIV or other STDs. It can be washed and used for seven times. Disadvantage is it's little expensive, require lot of motivation and high failure rate. What about the newer female condoms? Yes, their advantages being less failure rate, fewer side effects, and more acceptability of these newer female condom. You can get occlusive caps or the diaphragms also, but their failure rate is very high, between 18 to 28. And if you use with spermicide, it can come down to six. It is, It has to be introduced. 10 minutes to 2 hours before the act and should be removed after 6 to 8 hours can be used up to 24 hours and then removed. You also do get the cervical caps, but difficult to put in for any ladies and the failure rate naturally is very high in that. Vaginal sponges. Can one think about the sponges? 
Yes, one can think about the maximum wear time is 30 hours. I have seen people forgot, forgetting even their tampons, which they have used for the menstrual cycle. Day five, six, when they are just potting, they just forgot and they can come with the foul smelling discharge. So when these all things when it is, but this vaginal sponge is not available in India. The spermicidal alone use can be do. Then comes the intrauterine devices after the bacterial. So we saw natural method. We saw the barrier method. Now the intrauterine devices. Why is the IUCD underutilized, especially in India? I told you only in 3% acceptance. First is dearth of trained professionals to insert the devices. You need a, a trained person to insert these devices and that's problem. Second is negative publicity. The publicity for the devices is not only the pain and all, but the mother-in-law, mothers, they also come with the objections. They feel that some women feel they, they don't do exercise, they eat whatever they want and they blame to the copper tea. I can't even explain them how this small copper tea can give a weight gain, which has a no effect on their metabolism. So the misconceptions are also created by the healthcare providers and the public. Healthcare providers, especially those who cannot insert these devices, they want to explain them the barrier contraceptives or the natural method for or the OC pill for the obvious reason. And sometimes the side effects, uterine contractions, severe dysmenorrhea, breakthrough bleeding. These are the various intrauterine devices inert or a copper releasing or the hormone releasing intrauterine devices from the lipids loop and the OTA ring. I don't think now even they are a Y label, but these are the various uh, devices one can think about. And uh, in a copper releasing, it may be a copper 7, copper T200, multi-load copper T. We all know multi-load 250, multi-load 375. This only helps for a prolonged action also. And in, uh, other is a LNG use devices. Obviously here you need a lot of counseling because after six months to one year, patient can go in amenorrhea and they may not like it. Prevention of a sperm from fertilization. Well, how do these intrauterine devices work? Various mechanism of actions. Copper iron in itself can reduce the sperm motility and viability. Inhibits the implantation by production of aseptic inflammatory and body reactions. Thickening of the cervical mucus, especially by progesterone containing uh, mm, uh, devices. Now, these are the various devices. The drawbacks of these are their higher expulsion rate, higher removal rate because of the bleeding or the pain, and obviously the infection. But copper T380A, this is now 10 years and is available in all government hospitals for 10 years. And it is widely used now in Indian family program. While copper 7 or copper T200 is less used, multi-load copper T, yes, either of three years and five years duration. Sorry, I told two years, three years, three years and five years duration. And um, copper T380A, 10 years is widely used in Indian family planning program. LNG uh, device, Merina, it is effective for five years. Obviously, its success rate is very, very high. The failure rate is very low. But as I told you, amenorrhea uh, is the basic thing. But if the patient have associated adenomyosis or uh, it, um, it will help even in a smaller amount of small size endometrioma or the pelvic endometriosis. So these are the non-contraceptive uses of it. In the cases of AUB, progestin component of HRT, treatment of endometrial hyperplasia, adjuvant therapy to tamoxifen, especially because we don't want endometrial hyperplasia, which can come with it, and endometriosis or adenomyosis-associated pelvic pain. 
So in your IUC, which are these? This is very interesting, but it is little bit tricky. Flexi guard or a copper fix IUD. It is a three centimeter long. You can see that this is a three centimeter long. It doesn't have a frame. It is just the complete copper device. And the knot is pushed 10 millimeter into the myometrium. You get a special stilet and that stilet pushes it one centimeter into the myometrium. Of course, risk of perforation and all other things are there with it. Postpartum insertion of IUCD. Why? Because most women may not come for a follow-up after delivery. They go to their mother's place or they go back to their uh, mother-in-law's place and they may not follow with anyone. When should I advise this? Immediately on second, third day of a delivery or at the time of cesarean section, you can put it. Advantage, very easy to insert. Convenience, patient is, it's widely open mouth of the uterus. Disadvantage is it's a higher expulsion rate. And because it's a soft uterus, higher perforation rate also. But what is important is here the uterus is so much expanded when it starts contracting and going back, it may expel that out. But what is interesting to study is a paper published in 2009, lower expulsion rate following caesarean than vaginal delivery. IUCD insertion, remember one thing, many of you or every one of you are expert, treat this as a surgical procedure. When you are loading this, ensure that you are not touching the part which is going to be in the uterine cavity. Always remember this, this is to be taken as a complete sterile precaution. You introduce infection, you are putting the device in, you will be exaggerating and patient may land up in an acute PID. So remember, the use only has to be with the, I'm not going to show you the video, but the use has to be with the all aseptic precaution, painting, draping, consent, filling up the form, everything goes and then submitting to the government also. The advantages of IUCD, highly effective. We saw that. Long-term protection from three years to 10 years. Immediately, the moment you pass from the same cycle, it will be effective. And return to the fertility also is immediate. You remove it and immediately from the next cycle, she will be fertile. Highest patient satisfaction among all the methods and it's safe. What is very important is it needs a huge counseling to the patient. So if you see the WHO 2008, they have categorized them. The category one, no restriction for use. Anyone can use it. Category two is advantages overweigh the risk. So there are risk factors, but the advantage overweigh. Number three is risk overweigh the advantages. So please don't put it. The risk will be too high. And fourth is absolute contraindication. So these are the various indications and contraindications. What are the complications? We have to explain the patient. In first three to four cycle, especially, they will have a severe dysmenorrhea and menorrhagia as well. It's very important that you counsel the patient. Otherwise, in second, third day, uh, second, third cycle only, she will come back. She will say, oh, no, 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 I have severe pain. And I was aware my Bajuali ne bataya tha. And that's the reason I want it to be out. So very important that you explain. The reasons for excessive bleeding, one, increased plasmogen activating enzymes, increased vascularity of the endometrium, hormonal asynchronization, or a mechanical damage. What is the treatment is reassurance and NSAID. Tell them with the time. I always explain with the example that the mother-in-law, when the daughter-in-law enters the house, it takes time for mother-in-law and daughter-in-law to get adjusted. And once they're adjusted, they are the best friends. Same way is for a uterus, it doesn't like the device to come in. It will try its best to throw it out. After three to six months, it realizes that it cannot throw it out, better work in synergy and the contractions decreases. 
So this is how you have to explain and give Im immediately at the time when I always have a habit of uh, giving a prescription of an antispasmodic analgesics. And uh, when I'm inserting the copper tea that you are going to have four to six cycle, maybe painful, start taking this maybe a twice a day for two, three days and you should be fine. And as the time progresses, everything will be fine. Expulsion rate 2 to 8% in first year. Perforation rate 1 in 3000. More often with the push technique, copper tea than pulling the uh, um, cannula out. Infection rate 1.6%. At the time of insertion, it is mainly, or you may flare up the old pre existing infection. And that is why when you are putting the copper tea device, it's very important when patient comes for a consultation, you should be doing her per speculum, per vaginal examination, rule out any vaginal infection, cervical infection, or any tenderness in over the uterus or in the fornices. Of course, success rate is very high and the ectopic pregnancy rate is 0.09 per 100, which is very, very lower, lower than actually the women who are not using contraceptive, which is around 2 to 3% in a natural population. OC pills, there is a changing trends. Gra what is happening is the dose of estrogen gradually it is lowering. Newer progestins, which has less side effects, are coming up. Fewer hormone-free days so that less chances of a breakthrough bleeding or other things. Longer cycles or no cycles. Take it for a longer period for 84 days or maybe non-stop continuously. And the chewable tablets. So these are the various ways. Comparison of various progestins, I cannot go, but they have divided into four generation. The first generation, different estrogen, second generation estrogen, third generation, and the fourth generation. Drosperidon, Dinogest, all they are fourth generation, while uh, Dizogestrol uh, is the third generation. Levonorgestrol is a second generation, and Norethistron was the first uh, generation. So what are the monophasic pill? These are the various monophasic pill from Mala N to Mala D in a government hospital routinely oral L or oral uh, G. These are the product. While low AT and all are little expensive than the other products. Newer OCPs, as I told you, extended. You can extend to 84 days or you may take it continuously. 24 by 4 regime or 24 by this one. What happens in these regimes is they have given for a longer duration uh, and that's why there will be less side effects. Advantages, patient will have a fewer periods, only four in a year maybe. That's good. They want every three monthly the menses to come. Disadvantages, breakthrough bleeding. Current data does not demonstrate increased VT for extended. So you can think about using that. Continuous use of OCP, no cycles. Those patients who get severe premenstrual syndrome or who get severe dysmenorrhea, maybe because of adenomyosis, endometriosis, or the myomas, these are the estrogen-dependent uterine pathologies. So any estrogen-dependent uterine pathology will be helped uh, by giving a low dose because over the period, it will cause a thinning and that is lesser dose of the estrogen than the body is producing. Disadvantage, some women like to have a period. They feel otherwise they are becoming opaque. They are feeling water retention. So it's very difficult. Sometimes if it gets felt, very difficult to know if she's pregnant because three, three months she is having otherwise also amenorrhea. And sometimes the irregular spotting, which can happen, may be cumbersome. Now, what does the Cochrane says? Continuous versus cyclical use. Cochrane says it is similar in efficacy and safety. For satisfaction and compliance, they feel both are equally good. No difference. Discontinuation for bleeding problem, there is no difference. You get the same in cyclic or continuous. And extended cycle group, better in terms of headaches, genital irritation, tiredness, bloating, menstrual pain. So they are happy with that. Now, 84 by 7 placebo versus 84 by 7 ethinyl estradiol. 
what they have done is they have used placebo or in another group, it was an ethinyl estradiol. What scheduled bleeding was less in the group of ethinyl estradiol than over placebo. Unscheduled bleeding decreased more quickly in an ethinyl estradiol group than in a placebo and hormonal withdrawal symptoms were less. So obviously it shows that the presence of hormone helps. Drosperinone containing, do we have their more advantage? Yeah, maybe. No weight gain, very important. Symptoms of a premenstrual uh, syndrome or a hirsutism, acne, all these will decrease. So especially the PCOS patient who has associated this all problem of hyperandrogenism may be help more easily with the dress uh, dress on does not adversely affect the glucose metabolism or lipid profile and side effects is it has to be uh, as i said reduces the andral and uh, adrenal androgen and more helpful in pcos caution should be in all organ failure patients now 3 mg drosperinone with 20 microgram of ethinyl estradiol versus 30 microgram of ethinyl estradiol. Reduction of a, and here it was 24 days, it is 21 days. Reduction of hormone-free days in 24 by 4 regime. Decrease hormonal withdrawal adverse effect. Decrease incidence of unscheduled bleeding with the prolonged administration. In, decrease incidence of escape ovulation and hence the failure. Acceptable cycle control and good tolerability. Femcon, chewable. This is chewable uh, uh, flavored tablet, 24 by 4 regime. For those who cannot swallow the pills, there are patients. We feel those who are, can take it easily, say it's so easy. But you do get patient who says, I can't just swallow. So that's okay. For them, this chewable can be. And period lasts less than three days. More pronounced separation of a follicular development and less breakthrough bleeding. Natural estrogens, yes, new 4 uh, OCPs are available, 28 days packet. Uh, they have a different, different colors for uh, every day, different, different shades you will find from day 1 to day 3 to 7, day 8 to 24, 25, 26, and then last the 27, 28. Next step pack has to be started without a gap immediately. They should go to number 1. So progesterone only pills. These are the various progesterone combinations they have must be taken. What is very important of this is it should be taken at the same time daily. If dose is delayed for more than three hours, backup is needed for 48 hours. Failure rate typically used three to 10%. Irregular bleeding is the main reason for a discontinuation with progesterone only pills. Disogestrol, other Again, advantages, side effects with the androgenic less, no effect on lactation. So you can give this. Disadvantage, again, amenorrhea or irregular breakthrough bleeding. Now, when to start this OCP? You can start within day five of the menses, no need of back. If she has forgotten or she came on 10th day of a menses and says now from this cycle, you start it, but tell her that this is a first cycle and it will not be protected. She should use a backup contraception, maybe the barrier contraception for this month and then next month it will start working. Start progesterone only pill at any time, but use another method of a birth control if intercourse during the first 48 hours of a progesterone pill use. And the protection begins after two days in the progesterone only pills. WHO guidelines, they are written beautifully about if you miss the pill, what you should do. When you miss one or two active pills, what you should be doing, take active pill as soon as you possible when you remember. So if she misses, suppose she comes to you on Wednesday, I missed it on Tuesday. So on as soon as she remember on Wednesday, she should be taking. Plus, she has to take a Wednesday dose also. This is very important. But if she misses more than three pills, then she needs a backup plan, very important. And if 
Also, it's very important you should see on which day of the menses she missed. If it is in the first week she missed, then it's okay. She can use an emergency contraception. And if she has missed on a third week, finish the active pills and start the new pack on the next day. So take a new pill. Now, very important. There are so much of a confusion and myths with the cancer and OC pills. If you take an OC pill, you will develop the cancer. I need to tell you, there are certain protective mechanisms also. CA endometrium, OC pills will do protection. Epithelial ovarian cancer, again protection. Carcinoma of the liver, there is no association. Carcinoma of the cervix, there may be small association. We don't know about it, but they say it can be increased, especially in long-term use for more than five years. But 10 years after stop, stopping, the risk will return to the baseline. But these are the various factors, maybe that is the reason. Uh, augmenting carcinogenicity of the HPV or lack of a barrier contraceptives or because you are using the contraceptive pills, multiple partners, which may be one of the cause, predisposing cause for a CA cervix. Carcinoma of the breast, again, controversial. You can think about caution, especially if you have a family history, but current use increase early premenopausal may be biased, but decrease incidence of a metaplastic postmenopausal CA breast. So very important that you explain the patient all very well. Another dreaded complication, deep vein thrombosis. Yes, definitely, this risk has to be explained to the patient. I have seen so many young adolescents who are taking for a puberty menorrhagia and in the first OC pill cycle, they got a thromboembolism. So very important, I explain my all patient, they should take and then adequate hydration. Don't allow the hemoconcentration. You don't allow the dehydration. Newer progesterones with the OCP, non-OCP uh, user versus OCP with uh, LNG, three times risk of VTE. OCPs with disogestrol, drosperidon, uh, ciprotiron, uh, six to seven times increased VTE. So we have to accept that there is increased risk, higher risk of thrombotic events with the OC pills. Now, emergency contraception. Various emergency contraceptions are available, whether you should be taking within 120 hours, 72 hours, within 120 hours, 72 hours, and so on. So they are all prescribed. Unfortunately, in India, they are available on the table, and unfortunately, people take them themselves, which is not good. Only copper tea in IUCD emergency contraception where they need a gynecologist. Otherwise, they just take on their own. Then they come with the breakthrough bleeding. I have seen menstrual cycles, two to three menstrual cycles getting disturbed. And before they regularize, again, the lady takes. I have seen women taking at least 10 times in a year the emergency contraception. So it's very important that we explain to them and definitely they will be at your doorstep with the breakthrough bleedings. So it's very important for you to tell these emergency contraception are the hormonal pills. They are not devoid of complication and they should not be taken on your own, always under the guidance. What is the Cochrane says in 2008 with this? Levonorgestrel more effective than the use by regime. Single dose levonorgestrel, similar effectiveness as the standard 12 hours apart uh, split dose. So you can take that. Mephiprestone, superior to other hormonal regime. Mephiprestone low dose could be more effective than the levonorgestrel two doses, but not conclusive. And I think uh, Cochrane will always be non-conclusive. And copper uh, ICD effective and can provide ongoing contraception for another three to five years, depending upon what you use. And that's a wonderful thing to do. Now, injectable. Injectable, 30% less than the DMPS uh, intramuscular, uh, 104 milligram instead of 150 milligram. 
that is a subcutaneous dose, efficacy, safety, and immediacy of an onset equivalent to intramuscular. So the only advantage of subcutaneous is patient can take herself. She don't need to visit to any nurse or a GP or the gynecologist to take the injection. Amenorrhea at 12 months, 55% with subcutaneous and 50% with the intramuscular. There happens the slower, more sustained absorption, good tolerability with this. This is available in a pre-filled syringe, so patient can take on her own very easily. You also have a combined injectable contraceptives with the different brand names. Emergency contraception should be used as a backup if more than two weeks late for any injectable contraceptives or more than late, uh, three days late for a combined monthly injections. So it's very, very important to understand if you miss it, you have to use a super added other contraceptive meter. What is the advantage of uh, these over the progestin only? Better cycle control. So those combined injectable contraceptives have a better cycle control than a single progestin only. 30% of a user of these experience menstrual irregularities within first year as compared to 70% in a, uh, a single uh, progestin only use. Pregnancy, when they can plan as soon as six weeks after the discontinuation. So it's easily administered drug. Now comes the implants. These are the various implants. In India, the acceptance of implants because of the non-availability is mainly uh, is very poor. And these are the various implants one can think about and one can inject. Implanon, the newer uh, implant which has come, single rod, uh, three keto disogestrol. Mechanism of action prevents ovulation, alters the cervical mucus. Its efficacy, highly effective for three years and very uh, high success rate. Easy to insert and easy to remove. Only one rod. Different method than the nor plant and does not stimulate the fibrosis in the area. So probably this is an improved version. Vaginal ring, yes, there are available rapid absorption of the drug, constant release under control of the lady, first pass metabolism directly in the uterus, the GI metabolism uh, absorption is bypassed, fewer bleeding problem than the oral pills. So vaginal ring paste, uh, hormonal pastries are equally good. And these are the two with the various combination. Does not require a refrigeration, but they are not yet available in India. The Nor, uh, progesterone only ring can be used during lactation, yes, but less effective than the combined and uh, newer uh, rings are on the process. Transdermal, simple. Now, we all know the keto patches and all the painkillers, one can use it. Even fentanyl patches are available. Similarly, transdermal contraception patches are available. Use patch for three weeks and then one week free. Similar effectiveness like a OC pills. The failure rate is also quite low. So one can think about using these transdermal contraceptive pills. The patch uh, users exposed to 60% more total estrogen than the OC pill user. They should know that. And the breast discomfort, breakthrough bleeding is more than the regular OC pills. 3% discontinued due to the local allergic reactions. So, these are the four categories, the MEC categories for contraceptive eligibility. One in which there is no restriction. I have told you before also. Category two, advantages overweigh the disadvantage. Category three, the disadvantage is more. So, it's proven risky and it advantages uh, of uh, it overweighs. Uh, category four is where unacceptable. So probably in category one and two, we can safely use it. Follow-up visit. Now you have started. When do I do the follow-up? 
for a IUCD, definitely after first menses. And then we show the, at the time of insertion, the threat to the patient, we ask her to fail. Always remember, tell her not to put two fingers. She may pull out. So always put one finger high up in the vagina postmenstrually from second menses onward and she can. And she maybe I tell patient to come yearly, but at the time of removal, she can come because no side effect. But I make it a habit to call because sometimes there may be perforation. It might have penetrated. It might have been expelled and patient may not be knowing. So I like the patient to come yearly for this. Now, LNG implants, no routine follow-up are needed. Only at the time they can come. So patches and all, again, you can read off here. So friends, Contraception, very important. I'm not covering the permanent method that is a female sterilization or the vasectomy because it will go too much uh, lengthy. All of you know you can do either laparoscopic or at the time of a caesarean, you can do or the purpural after delivery. So, Kushal Parivar ka mantar, do bachyo mein teen ka saal ka antar. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. And I hope I try to cover in 45 minutes as much I can cover. Thank you. Team Corona, is there any lecture, any questions? Uh, no, ma'am. At present, we have not received any questions. So I think that's wonderful. Yeah. It was quite exhaustive, but it was important to cover every aspect of family planning or a contraception. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patient hearing. And those who are still logged in, I just want to say I'm contesting for a Foxy presidency. The elections will happen somewhere in August, September. I humbly request for your blessings. Thank you. So on behalf of the uh, whole Corona team, uh, we would like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Sunita Tendulwadkam, ma'am. And we have come uh, to the end of the session. So we'll see you uh, next in the series six. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.